In today's video, I'd like to discuss how your home design can influence your mental well-being and then dive deep into various interior design techniques that support each of them. But first I'd like to define what mental well-being is and why should our home design have any influence on it. Mental well-being is about more than just feeling happy. It's how you cope with daily life and what you believe you can achieve. You can have good mental well-being even if you have a mental health issue and vice versa. When your well-being is high, everyday tasks become easier. So creating an environment that contributes to how well you deal with your daily difficulties is very important. Now, why should your home have any impact on your mental well-being? Because your home has an impact on how you feel, particularly on how stressed or relaxed you feel. Your home design also impacts your habits, meaning that you are much more likely to exercise the activities for which you have created space in your home. And the items you surround yourself with become triggers and reminders to perform certain activities. Mindfulness, nature. One way to take care of our mental well-being is the practice of mindfulness, paying more attention to the present moment, to your thoughts, feelings, and your body can help you be more mindful. But this attention can also span to our environment, particularly to the natural environment, which has been found in a series of studies since the 1980s to have a restorative role for our mind. The attention restoration theory developed by Rachel and Stephen Kaplan basically states that looking at natural elements helps your mind relax and wander. This break helps your mind recharge and focus better on other tasks, so bringing natural elements inside can help reduce stress and improve your mood. Interacting with any plants has a positive impact on our well-being, but some plants have additional benefits. Some of them are very easy to care for and remove air toxins like a snake plant. Others are very fragrant, like the lavender and rosemary, two plants whose scent have been shown to be natural anxiety busters. They are also used in teas, food and oils, contributing to our well-being far beyond just seeing. Another way to bring nature in is to use natural materials. Adding natural textures changes the somewhat flat and monotonous environment we have created for ourselves. They catch your attention, and touching them brings your attention to the present moment. Try to interrupt the flat and smooth surfaces around you with textures that will create a bit of surprise and delight. You might bring a sheepskin throw or a yarn cushion on your couch. You might use wooden slats to accentuate a certain part of the room. Stone can provide a natural wall texture that can be very pleasant to the touch. Ceramics can be delightful home decor elements that provide a different texture. Cane can also be really interesting in the interior. Old tables from natural raw wood that keep their ripples and crevices can provide a pleasant experience to the touch. Woolly rugs with their big knots provide a pleasant experience for our feet. So all these elements contribute to reconnecting ourselves to nature inside our homes. Our senses of smell and touch bring us back to the present moment, restoring our attention and sense of well-being. Ensure proper lighting. Light has also been extensively studied and proven to have direct impact on how we feel. It has been shown to influence our serotonin levels, which is a hormone that helps you feel happier and more relaxed. Therefore, getting sufficient amount of light when we are indoors is very important to our well-being. So if you live in a home that maybe doesn't get much light to begin with, you might want to maximize the amount that spreads around the room by using clear and light-colored curtains as well as pastel furnishings to keep the atmosphere as bright as possible. The color of the light bulb matters too. Warm colors make spaces feel cozy, they turn down the mood, helping us wind down and get ready for bed, while cool colors are better for focus and work during the day. Learning with your hands. This idea comes from a collection of studies showing that learning a new skill being engaged in a creative project and working with your hands improves mental well-being. So engaging in regular creative hobbies, particularly one that involves using your hands, like painting, knitting or carpentry, helps improve cognitive function. 
Working with your hands on tasks that are not cognitively demanding helps the mind rest and restore. The other idea that you need to keep in mind is that the more things you need to set up before starting a new habit, the more unlikely it is for you to do it. So if you wanted to make sure that you stayed consistent with some kind of creative habit at home, then you would have to create a physical space for it and have everything ready for you to start. If you would have to pull things out of boxes and prep items every time you had to start, all these pre-activities would become part of your resistance towards exercising that habit. So where you want to start is to figure out a spot in your home where you can set up a table, no matter how small, that would allow you to sit down and have an hour with your creative habit. And I would encourage you to make it exclusively for that habit so that all your tools and devices would be laid out. Now, if you don't have much space, you might make use of a corner by placing two tables next to each other, one for your home office activities and one for your creative hobby. If this is a very messy creative habit, you might want to separate it from the rest of your home with a wall. That way, even if you keep your workspace a bit messy, you don't have to look at it every day. You might repurpose a closet into a small office or perhaps the garage. That way you can have a room where you can express your creativity with no restrictions. So designating spaces in your home for your creative pursuits will ensure that you have the best chance to do it regularly, maintaining your mental well-being. Connect with others. Cultivating your relationships is another factor that is highly influential for your well-being. Relationships with other people help you build a sense of belonging and self-worth and provide emotional support and allow you to support others. When it comes to your home, designing spaces that make it easy for your family to connect and exchange ideas with one another is important. But what is also important is for you to design spaces that make you feel comfortable to invite friends and family over. And they don't have to be expensive or elaborate. Here are two ways you can do that. You can either bring people together around a table or you can bring them together around a seating arrangement. So having a large table is always very useful for family meals, but it can also be a gathering place for doing homework in the evenings, playing board games or working on a crafting project. It's always nice to be able to gather around the table and do something together. When picking a table that invites people to sit together, you might look for a round one, an oval one, or perhaps one with big round corners. Rectangular tables generally make people more conscious about hierarchy and personal space at the table, but round tables or tables with round corners blur boundaries. It's never quite clear where one side of the table ends and the other one begins, so more people can be huddled together casually sharing a space. If you combine this table with a bench, then it doesn't occupy too much space in the room. You can also use an expandable table and foldable chairs for when you do have more people over. But like with the examples before, a table with its own designated space will be occupied more frequently because it doesn't require so much prior preparation. Similarly, if you opt for a more flexible, lighter modular sofa for the living room, you can find more configurations in which to be with your family and your friends. You can push the sofa elements around. You can group people or kids in different ways which makes the coming together easier. Being active. Staying active is not just good for your muscles and your heart, it also improves your well being by raising your self esteem, setting and reaching goals, and by sparking changes in your brain that make you feel calm and upbeat. Now, ideally, you would want to exercise outside because it also helps you get fresh air and sunlight, which are also highly important for your well being. But should you wish to exercise in your home, there are a couple of things to consider. The first thing you want to do in staying active at home is to limit the seating options, not in a way that is uncomfortable, but in a way that you don't feel invited to sit more than you have to. So if you have a couch, make it smaller, make it modular. If it's not massive, it will not become the primary activity in your living room. Use standing tables for a quick morning breakfast to limit your seating time. If you have a home office, make the table height adjustable to be able to stand on occasion. 
Just like the previous habits, you want to make sure you can designate an area or a corner of your room to stay active and that you make it easy to start a routine with no friction. You want to have your exercise equipment easily accessible, but not in a way that makes your home look like a gym, unless that is a gym room, in which case it's okay. If you do yoga at home, for example, you can add your mat to a beautiful wicker basket that will blend well with your couch environment. You can even deliberately buy your training equipment in colors that match your home decor. In this case, for example, the exercise ball and the yoga mat in cork material blend perfectly with the rest of the home decor on the shelves. So these are a couple of ideas that will help you stay active at home and will help you maintain your mental well-being with no extra effort or willpower. If you like these ideas, you should definitely check out my video Home Design for Better Habits where I dive deeper into this topic. See you in the next video.